to another episode of Search It Up with Sienna, the web series where I use IMDb to discover and talk about all different types of movies and TV shows, and how the people in front of and behind the camera not only make it all possible, but are somehow all interconnected. I talk directly with the talent about their backstories and experiences on and off set, and what they're up to today. On my last episode, I talked about Finding Dory with supervising animator Michael Stalker. Kate McKinnon was the voice of Wife of Fish in Finding Dory, and she also played one of the Barbies in the movie Barbie. So today, I'm so excited to be talking about Barbie. And joining me today is award-winning production designer Sarah Greenwood, who is currently nominated for an Oscar for her incredible work in Barbie. The production design plays such an important part in this movie as we go from Barbie land to real life. Sarah Greenwood gives us an inside look as she shares her approach, process, and her experiences on Barbie and on her other movies. In addition to Barbie, Sarah Greenwood was also a production designer on Beauty and the Beast, Anna Karenina, Sherlock Holmes, Pride and Prejudice, Cyrano, and more. And now, without further ado, here's my interview with Sarah Greenwood. How did you get started as a production designer, and were you interested in design as a kid? Well, that's a long story because I'm quite old now. So uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I've always, I've always been interested in art, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and and relatively good at art, and maybe not so good at other things. And uh, so I kind of went along that route all through school, did art all the way through, but along with other things. Um, my family, my father was an engineer, my mother was a physio, my grandfather was a dentist, and other uncles doctors, so medical. And they were trying to persuade me to go into that. And I just kept going, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> and uh, so I, in the end, I went to art school um, and I studied theatre design. So I worked in theatre. So I studied theatre design and it took five years. And then I worked in theatre for three years. And I then went to the BBC. Do you know the BBC? I don't in, think I've heard of it in, now. Okay, so it's the British Broadcasting Corporation. It's, you know, uh, very, very big, particularly, particularly then and it was an amazing training ground so oh. started working on like tv shows and things and then um yeah and then just kind of you know learned my craft as an assistant and things and then went into films so yeah yeah this is not my normal kind of film though I can say that oh, okay so this is like new to this is new territory for you yeah it is very new territory <laughs> for me. yeah and what was your prof- your first professional job as a production designer well it's interesting because it mixes so in, in theatre as a as the overall designer mm-hmm. um, and then at the BBC um, you can either go two routes you can either go kind of up the art director route yeah, so much a kind of learning, learning the you know the technical side of it, or go the production design route. Um, so you know, I did a lot of big drama series and things like that. And then I suppose my first proper kind of production design as a, on a film was a film called uh, I think in America it was released as The Merry War. Keep the Aspidistras Flying. It was by uh, the original novelist was George Orwell, Helena Bonham Carter. Okay. Was, and um, Richard E. Grant. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So they were in it. So that was my first. That was my first proper film. Yeah. And how did Barbie come your way? <laughs> uh, so, so Jacqueline Duran, who who is a costume designer, who I've worked with a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, she she has worked with Greta on uh, Little Women, and. Um, so Greta kind of said, oh, you know, do you think Sarah might be interested in doing Barbie? And Jacqueline said, I'm sure Sarah would be interested in doing Barbie. The whole thing is, it's like, not Barbie like you know it. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of yeah. like you put Barbie and you mix that with Greta Gerwig and you put the two together. Yeah. And you're going to have something really interesting. So yeah. so that's how it came about. So, yeah. you know, the connection yeah. with Jacqueline. I know if I don't correct me if I'm wrong, but you said that this was like something that um not usual type of project you do this movie. And I was recently just um looking at Sherlock Holmes and I saw mm-hmm. like the difference between like a very like black and white sort of yeah, like yeah. dreary like dreary set versus <laughs> all bright colors and everything. Yeah. And I was like, and what? But yeah, it was like a big difference between massive difference. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, you're right there. 
How long did it take you to come up with the plan for the Barbie movie? So when I first spoke to Greta, it was in the uh, winter of 2021. And I was actually in Sicily, in Italy, the little island. Yeah. You know, they've got a, there's a volcano on this island called Etna. Okay. We were filming up Etna in the snow and Etna was exploding all over the place. And we were filming a film called Serrano up there, Serrano de Bergerac. And so I was on this volcano and I had this phone call saying, would I be interested in working with Greta? And, you know, we had our first chats then. And then um, and then we spoke, we spoke because COVID was still happening. She was in America. I was in London. We spoke maybe once or twice a week for like nine months. Oh, wow. Like just, just chatting. Mm-hmm. The first draft of the script was not like a, you know, it wasn't like a classic film script. It didn't have scene breaks. It didn't have scene numbers. Mm-hmm. It was just this kind of stream of consciousness, really, from Greta yeah. and her husband, Noah Baumbach. He wrote it with her. It was kind of like, well, what's, what is it? <laughs> so it's just like, it was this very kind of you know, unfathomable piece of amazing writing, you know, um, and very funny, you, you know, and, and interestingly, um it's it's all in the film you know some things got cut uh-huh. but it, what's in there was in that first script you know all the ideas and how it was going to be done but you know it was kind of like you read it and you just think well how are you going to do the dolls yeah kind of doll like you know and um have you ever seen that film marwin with steve carell marwin. no but i do know steve carell but i've never seen yeah. it where he was like he was like a soldier you know like an action man yeah. And he, you know, they did it very, um, it, they were jointed and they were, they were like CGI'd, right? And I, and I was thinking, is that how you're going to do it? Because that's, that's not going to look very nice, you know? And, and Greg said, no, 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 it's going to be, um, it's going to be little moments that just make you think that they're dolls. So, you know, you think you've got your Barbies and, you know, they, is you see it when they when they go to kiss each other and they don't touch yeah and they go like that um and also it's all about how barbie how barbie interacts what makes it toy what is it that yeah. makes it a toy and uh you know so that took a lot of working out so basically we spent nine months talking about it in great detail um and and, and i know this is going to sound weird but it was one of the most intellectual and kind of philosophical films I've ever worked on yeah even though, even though it's Barbie and it looks very simple it wow. was different. yeah yeah I can I can kind of tell like when you really think about it that it probably was I mean just so difficult because I actually um which leads me to another one of my questions I heard you tested a hundred different shades of pink yeah um, how did how many did you end up using for that and like did you end up <laughs> using all of them was it one and six? no 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 so was it that was interesting because you know, you have to get the perfect pink, right? Yeah. And and it has to be very intense, you know. Um, even if it's pale, it has to have a purity about it. Yeah. So so we 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 tested, we got all these pinks, you know, some of them off the shelf, some of them we mixed, and you start off with something called so we had them all lined up and we painted them on boards about that big. We had them all lined up, and it's like, okay, well, it's not any of those and it's not any of those those were very purpley pink these were very salmon pink you know with a lot of yellow in it and Greta had this thing she didn't want something what she called millennial pink and so I thought okay so when I've looked up looked up what millennial pink was well there's no color that's millennial pink I know what she means now it's this kind of it's kind of like a slightly yucky pink actually um you know, work, works well in certain contexts, but certainly wouldn't work in Barbie. So, so we ended up with all these pinks and we got it down to 12. Okay. And, and they're all made from this base color, which was like, um, was a specialist paint um, who, do, who do paints for the industry called Roscoe, the company. And it's a paint, it's a, it's a pigment. So it's really um, like intense. Yeah, really. Look at it in the pot, it's almost black and you mix it with white or whatever colors you want to. And it you get this in really amazing, amazing kind of density of color. And so we mixed up te- 10 or 12 and we tested them against the other colors. So, you know, if you have this amazing pink and then you go and put a 
put a bl pale blue next to it. You think, oh, that's yeah. a beautiful pale blue. And you put the two together and suddenly the pale blue turns gray, right? Yeah. Or the pale yellow turns green. You know, you've got to be yeah. really, so there's a lot of work went into the whole color thing. <laughs> but anyway, we ended up with the 12 perfect pinks that, that we used, they used, the props used, the set deck used, costume used, and we tested them all with Rodrigo Prieta, who's the, who's the DOP. And then he he then kind of had this thing called Barbie Lux. So when he was testing them and he graded them, he turned it up slightly so they were even more vivid than we started with. So yeah, uh -huh. very, very colorful. And I know you mentioned earlier too that um that Greta Gerwig, she pulled like different things from um like from like sort of like how the Barbies didn't kiss all like all the way like that. And there was one thing I saw where um, Barbie was like floating down from her house because really when you play with Barbies, they don't go down the stairs. Was that a part? Did you take that into consideration at all? Or was Absolutely, that? Yeah. And the whole thing is that all the houses have no walls, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, so, you know, the whole thing is when you play with a Barbie, you're gonna, you're gonna, and it's like when Ken runs down the beach and he yeah. hits the wave, and of course the yeah. wave is plastic and solid. And then what, you know, if you're a child, you've got, you've got your Barbie and you're running down like this, and you suddenly go, bang, and you go, woo, <laughs> like that. And that's what you do as a child when you play with your toys. Yeah. And so yes, yeah, so you know, she's on the top of the roof and she jumps off and she, you know, and she gets into the car. And what was interesting as well, you might have noticed, is that the Every, the cars were slightly smaller. Yeah. You know, when you play with your, you can't, the Barbie doesn't fit. You kind of, mm. and the windscreen only comes up to here. And, you know, and the fact that, the fact that there's no, there's no stairs and the fact that there's, you know, they jump from here to here. And when, when she gets up in the morning, she walks off camera and then she comes down a floor and walks yeah. on again. There's no stairs there. You yeah. Know, and there's like, the there's no water that comes no. out either. There's no like, water. Yeah. That's, there's no, there's no, rain there's no wind there's you know it's a it's like a toy box yeah the whole idea and also we made everything smaller by 23 percent mm -hmm. when we worked it out so that so that when we when we kind of made the car it's 23 percent smaller than human scale wow. when we made the houses when you put barbie's i mean we did this in the in the, we bought a dream house and played when you put barbie's hand in the air she can touch the ceiling right yeah which is very low and so you make everything lower and obviously narrow and smaller. And and like the, you know, the the, the milk bottle, the milk car carton is big, you know, so you're playing with scale. And what that does is it makes the actors look bigger yeah. in, in the set. So that makes them more, look more like a toy. Yes. You have to, you had all these little tricks just, you know, and, and once you're, if it's done well and the acting is superb, which it was with um, with Margot and Ryan, then what happens is you believe it. You 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 are completely involved in it. It's in a way, it's a bit like theatre. You know, you believe that that character that you can see on the stage. I mean, that's not you know you know kind of I don't know Hedda Gabler or someone like that. It's it's it's, it's somebody in a costume on a stage, but you believe it. So there's something called your suspension of disbelief you believe it whereas i think sometimes with particularly with a lot of cgi films you don't believe it because you know it's not real yeah and one of the things that um greta wanted on this film was everything to be real and in camera uh, right so that you yeah. can touch everything so so you know so everything was real everything was built you know the skies were painted they were 50 foot high 800 foot long going around the studio wow. you know so it was it was all in camera is what we call yeah. it what was your planning space like when you're doing all this work just trying to figure out what this house is going to look like what this is going to look like how where do you do that space where you can just concentrate really hard on that that's a very good question um okay so so when I'm in the nine months pr before we start what we call pre-production which is proper mm -hmm. proper you know um I work here in my house you know, oh. um, I have meetings with my key members of the team. When we get going for real, um, I have a massive department of 
I've supervising art director, three senior art directors, art directors, assistant art directors, yeah. people who draft, concept artists, you know, the whole lot. I, I work very closely with Katie, who I'm sorry she's not here today, who is the set decorator. Mm -hmm. So she does she does a lot of things like that are I I do I do the whole conceptual stuff and the structures. She uh -huh. does, you know, glasses and bottles and yeah. you know whatever but we work very closely and um so she has a big department of about 20 people and so we have an office with lots of space and yeah. lots of people mainly working on computer and working it out we do lots of drawings so we have what we call pre pre pre-production which on a film of that scale was about five or six months oh wow to get it together because you know, you remember the big dream house set, but yeah. there were about 50 sets, lots of sets, yeah. you know, Mattel, all the transitions, yeah. um, the beach, you know, lots and lots of sets. So there's a lot to do, you know. So yeah, it takes a long time. You have time, but you know, time is tight. And, yeah. and that when we had the problem trying to get the pink paint, it was like, oh my God, there's not enough pink paint. And we only have like three months to go and we need it. We need it now, you know, so it's always chaotic. But yeah, yeah. it's great. It's a, if, you're, if, if you're creative or any, anybody who's watching this is artistic and creative, you know, the film business is a really great business to be in. Definitely. I mean, it's so cool to just like be able to draw out like your yeah. own little like world and then have it come to life, right? Before. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, and, 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 for something like Barbie, you know, it's kind of whatever you want. Do you know what I mean? It had to feel like Barbie, but it wasn't. We didn't copy the dream houses completely because they're, you know, they're different. You know, they needed, you needed to be able to shoot them so that when you saw from one house to the other, you could see through so they had no yeah. walls. Yeah. You know, it's complicated uh, structurally, engineering complicated. But like I say, I, I design it. I don't work out the engineering. So yeah. What so I recently just watched the HGTV show um what? on HBO Max Barbie like the um I forget the exact name but like the Barbie's Dream House where right? the the two like the multiple teams build like a different room of the Barbie Dream yeah. House and redo yeah, yeah. it um which I thought it was such a really it was a really cool series I had a lot of fun watching it and that's really where I kind of got to see how cool it is to kind of just transform it into like this yeah, big, yeah. whole Barbie thing. But in each episode, um, each team was assigned a different era for their room. So 1960s Barbie, 1970s Barbie. And so mm -hmm. then when you were make um making the plan for the production, um, what eras of Barbie did you pull from or did you pull from any? Pulled from them all, actually. <laughs> um, you know, we looked we looked at, at uh, historically all the Mattel dream houses. Yeah. And I mean, my personal favorite is actually the 1960s one that's all made of cardboard. Yeah, you know, it's very flat. I love yeah, it. I yeah, love yeah, it. it was cool. know, it's very delicate and quite stylish, actually. I think in the um, maybe in the 80s, 90s, it got a bit lost and got a bit really ugly. Um, <laughs> all the 80s and 90s are coming back now. Um, and so, you know, so we took from everywhere. And um, but I think our thing was we looked at we looked at a lot of Palm Springs architecture, yeah. you know, um, Slim Aaron's photographs and, you know, kind of mid-century modern design. And the reason for that was that some of the Barbie houses from Mattel are very, very uh, busy. You know, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot going on. Um, and in a way, what you have to do in film, even though you have to kind of, it's 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 about the empty spaces as much as about what you put in. So like, that's why Katie chose you know, a lot of the kind of classic um, pieces of furniture that were just really clear shapes. So when you have a table, you get the tulip table. It's just this beautiful shape. So that when you're looking at it, you just see one very simple shape. You don't see a lot of stuff going on, you know, because it had to look toy-like and that we felt was going to work best. So, you know, we looked at the, we looked at them all and we learned from them all and then we did our own thing. And I heard you never had Barbies of your own, but did you grow up around Barbie dolls? Like with, did your siblings or your friends? Yeah, um, some, but we, in England, we had, um, there were Barbies here, but here we had, um, 
uh, dolls called Cindy. Oh, okay. You should look it up. It's not not it's nothing like a Barbie. She's <laughs> kind of she's kind of very homey. You know, she's very kind of uh, like like Barbie's dare I say ugly sister. <laughs> she's really kind of straight. Um, so we had Cindy here. Um, and also, I mean, I'm 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 quite old, but I remember we had a lot of those really nice cutout dolls where you cut oh, okay. you grab the clothes and you put you hook them on. Yeah. Uh, no, we didn't have Barbies, and um, my father made me my first doll's house, oh, which was wow. this this beautiful wooden. It was made of wood, and you know, I had the wallpaper from the from the dining room up on one wall. It was a bit, it was yeah. a bit clunky, but you know, I think the thing this is the thing when your kids. You love what you've got, do you know what I mean? And it's, you make the yeah. most of what you've got. So, yes, I knew of Barbies. And um, and I must say, you know, it wasn't until I did this film that I really came to know and respect what Barbies have done, you know, over the years. You know, they've gone off, Mattel have taken them off and down a few routes that are maybe not so brilliant. But, you know, the bottom, bottom line is, and, and as you see at the beginning of the film, where the little girls were just learning to be mothers with the baby dolls. Yeah. And then they kind of smash, which is a spoof on the 2001 uh, Stanley Kubrick film. They smash them. And then you have this Barbie doll. And that was amazing. When you think about it, 1959, you know, women weren't allowed to ha own their own houses, drive their own cars, you know, everything had to be, you know, so for, to have a doll that was more representative of what you could be aspirationally, um, it was amazing. So when you look into the story of Ruth Handler and the whole story of Barbie dolls, it's a great story. And I think it comes over in the film as well, you know, so yeah, it's good. I also read that you pulled some inspiration from The Wizard of Oz for the real yeah. life world. Yeah. Um, accurate. And where did you come up with that idea? The Wizard of Oz is like a touchstone for uh, a lot of filmmakers, particularly designers. You know, it's so it's such a perfect film, and and it's kind of like I mean, I love it, and I I love the idea of you can make you know they're Easter eggs, you know, they're not important and things yeah. in, in so much as but you know this idea that like like Barbie Land was like Oz, really colourful. Yeah. And then we go into, they land in uh, Venice Beach. It's like, it was colourful, but it was like monochromatic colour. It yeah. was like, it's like all the colour being drained out of it. So it's like a reversal. So that was like Kansas. Yeah, well, even Sasha was like, the, and her friends were all wearing like black outfits. Oh, black. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. That was it. So, um, so, so just, you know, and then we did the, the rainbow over, over Barbie Land and, the road that they come out on, the pink road, was the pink brick road, not the yellow brick road. It was made of the same bricks, mm -hmm. you know, in the same style. Um, and then we had, when, when when they're in the Mattel boardroom, there's a painted cloth around the outside, and there is downtown Los Angeles. Yeah. But we altered it to make it look like the Emerald City, but it was yellow instead of green. So, you know, so we're just having fun with things like that. Um, yeah. We always do things like that. You know, we always, you know, like in Beauty and the Beast, there's the beautiful floor and there's a top shot looking down when they're all dancing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so we we made this monogram, and, you know, so we made it, um, we made it um, uh, Disney, you know, so it was his, because it was for, it was, it was for, it was for Disney. So we did WD. So next time you look at it, there's Walt Disney's the insignia on okay. the floor. Oh, yeah. You know, because we're gonna you have to put something there. So why not have a connection to yeah. you know, to the film? So yes, yeah, so 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 certainly uh uh and in the cinema, you know, when she drives along the road and you see the cinema on the left, yeah, the cinema is playing the Wizard of Oz. Okay. So oh, okay. And then you know it's advertising. I think they remember that for some reason. Yeah. And what was the most challenging part of working on the movie? Mm -hmm. The whole thing. Um, <laughs> no, I think it was. You know, I think it was once once you understand. You know, so that nine months of talking to Greta. Once you understand and you and you make your own rules, your own laws, and you understand it, then um, and you put you apply that to everything that you're doing, you created your own rules, your own laws, and you apply that to what you're doing. Then once you know that, mm -hmm. you kind of just do it. Um, but until you know that, it's like 
you know, blind. You just go, oh my God, what am I doing? You know, and then and you kind of go, oh, okay, I know what I'm doing now. Now I've just got to do it. So, um, you know, it was, it was, it was great fun. I loved doing it actually, um, but it was all equally difficult. <laughs> In your role as the production designer, how closely do you collaborate with the director? Constantly. <laughs> so, um, so, so, but what happens when you're, you know, so when you're when you're coming up with the ideas and you're just talking to them, and then what happens is the DP, the director of photography, comes on board. Um, generally, about three months from filming, and so you start showing them all all the plans and the models and you know yeah. and what you're going to do. And then they start talking specifically about certain shots or sequences or um, film stock they're going to use or grades they're going to put on it. And so it kind of, it, it becomes like the three of us. And then as the closer you go to filming, I'm very involved in the practicalities of making this, sure the sets are finished on time and they're dressed and the, whatever, everything's perfect. And they're getting more and more involved with the actors and going into rehearsals. And so you kind of, you transition. So you work with Greta all the way through and then you transition over to, you know, and, and then and then you kind of, you know, you're you're there every day. You go on to the stages, you know, any new sets, you're there. And, you know, and actually Barbie was just such fun with, with Ryan and all the Kens and all the Barbies. It was such good fun to work on um, that if you had time, you'd just go and sit and watch them because it was just brilliant so funny you yeah. know um and like that dance sequence you know which is taken out of singing in the rain and greece you know where they're on the dream beach that you know they're all dressed in black yeah you know that was like watching a massive musical you know because they they went through the whole thing and it was like you know everybody was sitting there and it was just like that was brilliant it was like being yeah. in the, being in the best theater show you know so yeah you work closely with the set director, Katie Spencer. Yeah. At what point in the process do you begin to collaborate? The very beginning, towards the middle? Katie and I have worked together for 25 years. Wow. So so we've worked together for a long, long time. And so we're working together right from right from the beginning, talking yeah. about it. She's like a, you know, uh, it's great because, you know, it's just someone to talk to about what you're doing because otherwise yeah. it's a... It can be quite lonely if you're, you're sitting there on your own just thinking, oh, my God, am I making the right choices? Yeah. But having someone to talk about it with, you know, when if Greta's not around or you're not sure about suggesting an idea. Um, so, yeah, so Katie and I work from the start right to the end. And, uh, you know, because we've worked together for so long, there's a shorthand. Yeah. You know? um, but neither of us had ever worked with pink like this before. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh, oh my God, this is... Um, no, this is unusual. And and also, you know, all of our films, like you said, you've watched Sherlock, and Sherlock was quite kind of grungy and dark, and it was all Victorian London. And then the other films we've done, you know, Pride and Prejudice, it's like set 250 years ago. You know, we work on a lot of period films, and you have a lot of layers of what we call patina. You know, there's a lot of stuff, and there's more stuff, and there's yeah. texture, and it's dirty, and it's old. Yeah. And there's lots of places to hide mistakes and then suddenly barbie is just like ping you know there's yeah. nowhere to hide you see everything so yeah are you on set through production and do you ever work directly with the actors no i like i say i'm on i'm on by the camera every every time we have a new set so you might like barbie land you know we shot on that for like two weeks so you see them in yeah. the first day any big changes you go and sort it out for them and you check they're all happy um the actors the main actors we always show what we're doing mm -hmm. and you and you take them around the set and things um katie because she's involved in all the props and yeah. and all of that she gets more involved with them yeah and she's very funny and she's very witty and she's very good at making up you know ideas and actors love ideas you know so they say oh you know why don't we do it like this and we do it like that you know you know, so so she has more to do with them, and she will always show have a show and tell of all the major kind of hand props and things. Yeah. Um, and Ryan, you know, he never did the same thing twice. He always improvised with whatever he had around him, yeah. and he he was a genius. You know, um, and Margot, Margot is something out of 
she's like out of old Hollywood. She's, she's, you know, she's just, there's a term called slapstick. She's got such great comic timing and she's very physical. You yeah. know, when she holds her foot up, when her foot went flat, yeah. you know, the whole sequence where she was rolling across the sand, it's not in the final film and climbing up on the bench. And it is hysterical, you know, just the way she moves and things. And the fact yeah. that, you know, when she jumps off, jumps off the roof for the second time when she's uh, having yeah. a bad day. Yeah. And it's all in one shot. She jumps down and she's on a wire, but still, you've got to be brave to jump off a, yeah. you know, and she jumps down and the camera goes down and finds her and she pops up. And she goes, oh, fine, nothing to see here. All done in one shot in real time. And to, to be able to carry that off physically is amazing. So, you know. So they're great. They're they're lovely to work with. But you know, obviously Jacqueline uh, costume and Ivana, who did the hair and makeup, they have a lot to do with them. Yeah. And I'm glad I don't have that much to do with them because <laughs> actors actors can be tricky. <laughs> yeah. Ones, but they can be, yeah. And I'm also a huge fan of Beauty and the Beast, which you were also the production designer on. Um, what was your process very different from that and Barbie? I mean, I'm assuming it was, but was it more it was it similar in any way? No, oh, it's they're both they're both very big films actually. Yeah. Um, Beauty and the Beast was very because uh, it was historic and it was set in France, but it was still a fantasy, you know. So you had the village, and then you kind of go through the woods and you go to the castle. Um, and again, because because the because the critters, the you know the clock and the candlestick and everything, yeah. because they were we made them, we designed them, but they were also CG. So mm -hmm. therefore, it was important that everything else around them was there, real. So we built the ballroom, we built the stairs, we built yeah. all the sets, and um, I mean that was that was you know there you could just go for really beautiful things, you know. I mean it yeah. was it was it was uh, you know and a lot of historic research and things. Yeah, it was it was as big as Barbie, as. Difficult as Barbie, but as much fun as Barbie, but yeah. very different, yeah. Do you have a favourite movie you've worked on so far? Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> Just say that. Yeah. And, uh, it is, I, think, I think so. I love Barbie. I think it's great fun, yeah. Do you think there'll be a Barbie too? I, I genuinely don't think there will be a Barbie too. I mean, I'm sure Mattel will make other films. Maybe they'll do Skipper. Maybe they'll do, yeah. you, know, um, you know, some other of their toys. I think they will, but I don't think there'll be a Barbie too because I think it's, you know, it's what is beautiful about Barbie is that it's kind of like an art house blockbuster, yeah. you know, and it's very individual. And I don't think, I don't think there's anything more to say. I don't know. Anyway, I wouldn't do it. So, you know, I've enjoyed that. Thank you. I don't like, I did do two Sherlock's though, but I don't generally like going back on something. I like to keep being challenged and going forward. So, yeah. yeah. For my last question, it's actually five questions, but they're five rapid fire questions. So I'm just going to ask you them and then you kind of answer as quick as you can. So okay. you ready? Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite color? And it doesn't have to be pink. Well, it was never pink. <laughs> and at the moment it is pink. And I painted my bedroom pink. Very pale, but it is pink. So yeah, there you go. Vacation at the beach or in the countryside? Countryside. Although um, I love the sea. Yeah. But countryside, yeah. Not the beach. I don't like the beach. What's your favorite movie? Um depends on my mood, but uh weirdly, I like things like The Godfather. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great movie. I like I like 1980s movies actually. Yeah. That I think they're really well made then. But I I I mean I went to see Oppenheimer yesterday. I really enjoyed that. I I like all movies unless they're terrible. But you know I like I like most movies. Yeah. Yeah. And what's your what's your favorite animal or pet? I had two beautiful dogs. They were called Lurchers. I don't know if you know what they are. They're they're half greyhound, half you know anything though. So. But yeah, beautiful dogs. Mm -hmm. And um, my last question is: What's one piece of advice you would give to the next generation of filmmakers? Be brave. There you go. That's and good. that is true. Because that's what Greta was and Margot in making Barbie. Very brave. Stick by yeah. your guns. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great piece of advice. Well, yeah. I want to thank you so much for <laughs> letting me talk to you. I 
learned so much from you and I'm just so happy I got to talk to you today. Okay, well, nice to talk to you too, Sienna, and uh, have a nice day, okay? Thank you, you too. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Greenwood, for taking the time to speak with me. Your work is incredible, and I loved hearing about your background and inspiration and your experiences and funny stories about the movie Barbie. And now, before we switch it up, here's a quick fun fact. Did you know that? In the opening scene, Margot Robbie's character, stereotypical Barbie, wears a swimsuit that is a direct recreation of the original 1959 Barbie doll that first debuted in stores. And now it's time to search it up. Let's see. Oh, Jeremy Page worked on visual effects for the movie Barbie. And he was also still photographer on one of my favorite shows of all time, Only Murders in the Building. So next time we'll be talking about Only Murders in the Building. See you then.